minute or two to try to join into the feed if they are wanting to watch with us today. And we'll go over exactly what I'm stitching and what we'll be talking about. So I'm very excited. This Today's project should be a lot of fun. Um, if you are tuning in outside of Charlotte, North Carolina, which is where we are, let us know where you're coming from or where you're tuning in at. Uh, we love to see people all over the world tuning in at our 2 p.m. Eastern time. So if you're able to make it, let us know that you're watching. How are we looking on our streams, oh, Catherine? Yeah, We're good. Awesome. All right, so we have ourselves live. And you'll see here I have a bunch of fun, colorful things. So it is Thursday, and if this is your first time joining our live session, my name is Melissa. Um, I'm an educator as well as marketing and graphics director here at Anita. So you guys see a lot of me, but I'm one of the few people that love to stitch with you guys. So every Thursday, this is a great opportunity for us to hop on our live stream on both YouTube and Facebook and say hi to everyone in, personal, um, in person since we can't see you guys out in the country and in the wild. Um, and so if you have questions as we go through the technique today or anything I talk about or show off, please let me know and we'll have those questions read to us. And at the end of the stream, when it ends, you guys can rewatch this video at any point. Um, any special promos I announced today are for today only. Um, but otherwise, this instructional video will still help you stitch out the project and learn what we're talking about. So let's take a look at what we're stitching today. If you have been following along with us at all throughout the week, you've noticed that on Tuesdays, we do a Technique Tuesday. And we kind of tie that into some of our sales throughout the week, um, what educational stuff we're showing you all. And this week is a really exciting one. We're talking about folded fabric. Now, folded fabric is a very traditional method used in quilting, but it's also used in projects too. I really want to show off like a great example of folded fabric while we're waiting for people to tune in. And this is kind of what I picture in my head when I think folded fabric. Um, this one is our Bargello quilt, uh, obviously a very large piece made with a bunch of fabric strips that feature that folded fabric technique. So time-wise, this one would take you a little while, but what I'm going to show you guys today is how easy folded fabric is to do with the Anita method and in the hoop and why it's one of our favorite techniques. And you'll see it through all of our dis different collections and project styles. So again, that really pretty Bargello, it's a very vertical, I think this one's Bargellissimo is the name of this one. So very pretty, it's like a tall runner um, or wall hanging, featuring those really pretty strips of fabric. And there's no embroidery on this one, just the folds. So that's a great example of folded fabric, but the project I'm stitching today is great if you're a beginner and have never done folded fabric. Do we have any people tuning in saying hi to us? Oh yeah, yeah, we got Let's see who we got while we Sally wait. Sally from Springfield, Illinois. Illinois, we have Sally in Illinois. Hello, Sally, thanks Florida, for tuning in. California, Florida, Arizona, Illinois. Awesome. All right. Well, I'm so glad to hear you guys are tuning in and saying hello. So now that I know we have some people tuning in, I'm going to go ahead and tell you what we're stitching today. So if you have seen recently, we did this as a 365 drop, but it is available to anyone on the website. We have these beautiful folded fabric bookmarks. Now, this is a really cool collection we just came out with. That was the front cover of the tutorial. I have my tutorial PDF printed off right here so I can follow along with the steps. But this is the project that we are making today. So very cool. I wanted to walk you guys through this step by step, but also because this is our technique of the week, I really wanted to show off, let me show you with the phone camera, how beautiful these are. They have that very pretty split satin on the edge that helps keep the fabric from unraveling and concealed. They are finished off on the back too. And we have a variety of different patterns and obviously they have some embroidery. The real fun effect we chose to do with ours is all of the greenery was done in metallic gold so that they all kind of tied together. But obviously the choice is entirely up to you guys. So you can stitch this in any color combo, a fat quarter set of fabrics. You could even do this with scrap fabrics. So a great option to do um, scrap busting in your home. Maybe you have a bunch of excess pieces from the last quilt you made or you're entirely new, which is our other favorite people to talk to about this technique. And this is a great way to try folded fabric with just three pieces of fabric and not having to do that Bargellissimo quilt we just showed off. So I'm going to go ahead and break down the project today and show you exactly what we need to get started. If you're stitching along with me, you can gather your items ahead of time if you already owned the tutorial. If you don't, it is for sale on the website, folded fabric bookmarks. Be sure to check that out. Um, and I'll go through exactly what we need. So I have my 5 by 7 embroidery hoop here. We are doing bookmarks, so good practice is to pick the smallest hoop that will fit your design. So that is the size I went with. And I have two layers of about a medium weight tearaway on here. We always get asked what weight is our tearaway. We use everything from soft to firm or strong tearaway. 
Um, I think this one sits right around in the middle. It's papery, but it doesn't leave too much pulp in the edge um, when we do have that satin stitch finish. So those are questions you guys want to know. I think it's medium weight tear away. And we do two pieces because we are doing those satin stitched edges and we don't want to perforate the tear away so much that the project falls out. So we found that doubling it up is a great way to keep it nice and secure. I'm going to go ahead and stick the hoop into my machine and then we're going to go ahead and load the design. So they see this Haley and want to make sure on camera. Cool. So I have my USB stick loaded in. I chose the design on my computer that I wanted to stitch. So I'm navigating to my USB and there is the bookmark that I'm doing. I chose number six. I don't have the stitch out here because I'm going to stitch it for you. <laughs> so I wanted to show it off. Um, but we're going to go ahead and set the design. And again, on screen commands might differ for your machine. So if you need help, just reference your manual or your local dealer. But there we have our design pulled up on screen. Once we are sure that's what we're doing, we hit embroidery and then we get to start the design. So I mentioned I have two pieces of tear away here and then I'm going to go ahead and grab my first fabric color or tack down color. Um, I might need to change the threads around depending what color I'm using, but I'm going to do purple so you guys can clearly see the lines that I'm drawing on here or stitching, I should say. And just a reminder, if you're tuned in, I will be giving a promo code shortly. I'm going to wait just a little bit, get you guys going on this project before we reward you <laughs> for tuning in, but you will get a coupon code for watching as well. So I have my thread in here. The first step of the design for this folded fabric bookmark is going to be a placement stitch. Now, as I show you guys, it's running in the hoop. I'll pick a different one to kind of show it off. But the basic premise of folded fabric when we do it through Anita is that we run a placement stitch, you then have a folding stitch, and then you tack the folded fabric in place. But a lot of times people don't understand how do we start these folds. So anytime we do folded fabric, there is a special term for the fabric that we call our cornerstone. Now, I can't say whether or not we coined this term. I think we did, <laughs> but I haven't heard anyone else use it. So the cornerstone is going to be the first fabric placed into your design, just like a standard applique, which means we run a placement stitch, we're gonna take our first fabric and we're going to lay it over the stitch right side facing up. So I'm sticking the hoop back into my machine. And I mentioned a minute ago, I have my tutorial printed here. There is a shot of the bookmark that I am making right now. So we'll just keep that up so I can see the fabric color order. I do have my machine steps as well. So if you are following along with the tutorial, you can reference your design steps for color changes. But I was here when we stitched these <laughs> and I have the materials. So I'm just gonna go based off site because I remember what they were. So this bottom corner in my bookmark should be the teal fabric. Again, whatever fabrics you're using, you can change up placements and colors to be what you'd like. Now, the fun thing about folded fabric is that we don't have to do a bunch of precise measurements. We can measure our placement stitch and trim as we go. But if, let's say, you bought a beautiful fat quarter bundle, this one is very pretty. It is by Melody Miller, and it is purchased from Ruby, Ruby Star Society? Yes, Ruby Star Society is who is on this. I know we're going to get questions about these fabrics because they're really pretty. That is what was featured in the bookmark collection. Um, but let's say I bought a fat quarter and I don't want to just chop into this fabric trying to pre-cut everything. Um, I didn't get to press this <laughs> before our live, so it's a little wrinkly. But we are going to lay it as we go and then trim as we move through the design. So I took my fabric. I know the first one is right side facing up as a standard applique, which we also call our cornerstone fabric. So I am going to go ahead and run that tacking stitch. And you guys can take a peek at that. We have Loretta that has been with us Yay, Loretta. We love that you're still with us and joining in for our stitch outs. I hope even though you've been with us for that long, you still learn something new every time. That is our goal here. All right. So I want to make sure I'm giving you guys the correct instructions for how our PDF is. So now that we've tacked that down, we are going to trim. Keep my PDF tutorial nice and neat. And then I'm going to pull this out, lay it on a flat cutting surface. And I have my curve tip embroidery scissors here. And we're just going to trim to the tacking stitch line. Now, again, if you're just tuning in, we're going over the folded fabric technique. And instead of doing a quilt block, because I get to do those a lot, but oftentimes they are unfinished in a quilt. Like we don't do the quilting live when we put blocks together because that just takes a while. <laughs> we don't want to record all my errors. 
So we're doing embroidery, but this is a great way to try this quilting technique in something that's a little bit more small and manageable. And like I said, it only has three fabrics or so in it that are folded. So to circle back where we are in our design, we just laid our first cornerstone fabric or our standard applique. And now if you notice the picture of my bookmark that I'm replicating, all the other fabrics will be folded. So that was our cornerstone or starting piece. So to continue the design, I'm going to go ahead and run the next step, which is gonna act as a placement to show me where my next fabric will lay. Hopefully this explanation works out for you guys to understand how easy these folds are to make. When we get to the embroidery, I have some other collections here set off to the side that I want to feature to just kind of show folded fabric in something different <laughs> than what I'm making. So you guys have some other context. All right, so the next fabric in my design is this fun floral print. Again, the Ruby Star Society purchased by Miss Melody Miller is her designs. I wanna say the fabric line was Camilla. Very pretty. We do have a iron-on fusible interfacing on our fabric. So if you're seeing the sheets of white, I do have that ironed onto the back. That just helps any embroidery pulling or issues with the design, which we never have because we prepare, we prepare them. All right, let me find a nice clean edge here because this edge had some iron on stuck in a random spot. We don't wanna show that. There we go, random piece I did not need. So there is my edge of my fabric. Obviously we have right side facing down. So what we want to do is right side facing down. I'm going to pull the hoop out so you guys can follow along with how I'm laying this just a little bit easier. Let's see if I can get it to sit upright. There we go. Can they see that? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> Where are we at? Right over here? Is that a little better? Yeah. How about that? <laughs> we'll just hold it up. So I want to make sure you guys can see this placement stitch for the first fold. So we have our standard applique. Here it's marking out our next piece of fabric. You'll notice that the placement stitch overlaps your last laid fabric. Now, if you're new to folded fabric, this is my favorite like terminology to use. We are going to lay our next fabric covering the last piece that we laid. So the way I would do that, please excuse me doing this one-handed while trying to hold it up for you guys, is we are going to take the raw edge of our fabric and line it up over the existing piece. So literally the two raw edges can touch. All you have to do is make sure you're covering that inner stitch, which is the true place we want the fabric to be concealing it. And I wanna make sure I get my iron on in the shot too. There we go. So let's say that is where I'm putting it. I'm going to go ahead and stick the hoop back into my machine. And the reason we are laying the fabric right side facing down, I'm gonna have to reset all this folding. Bear with me guys, it's hard to do with the little camera here but I wanna make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. All right, so like I mentioned, I take the raw edge of the fabric, I line it up to the last laid fabric, and that puts me right there. And now what I'm gonna do is run the next machine step, which is a folding stitch. So this is where the magic happens with folded fabric. I am gonna keep my hands here just to keep the fabric nice and taut. Very pretty. And like I mentioned, I'm not trimming ahead of time. I have all this floppy excess, but that helps me conserve the amount of fabric I'm using. If you are picky about wanting to pre-cut, you definitely can. So you, all you gotta do is measure your placement stitch and leave a little bit enough to like trim. But there is our folding stitch. So you can kind of see how this fabric is now tacked in place. What we're gonna do is quite literally fold it over the line. So I'm gonna trim off some of this excess. I know I said don't pre-cut but that way I can hold it up and kind of show you guys what I'm doing. Take that excess out. All right, so there we are. There is our folding stitch. We are literally going to take the fabric and fold it over the line. And at Anita, we love to say, give it a finger crease, which is when it's laying flat, rub your finger on the fold. And if you have a smaller piece of folded fabric, you can definitely use tape to secure this in place. But I've been doing this for a little bit now, and I'm okay with my hands being in here. Just watch your fingers. But now I'm running the tacking stitch. So quite literally, you guys, I just did our entire folded fabric process in three easy steps. We had our placement stitch for the first fold, our folding stitch that creates the line to fold it against, and then now we are running our tacking stitch to secure that fold. So again, great if you've never done folded fabric, or maybe you have and you're like, I don't wanna commit to a new quilt just yet. Um, this is a quick and fun project to do that we're about to finish it on the live today so obviously it can be done in about an hour or so total so now that we have that folded fabric 
tacked down and secured. We're gonna take our scissors and again, just like with the first fabric, trim around all the sides. And if you guys have questions on this technique, let me know and I'd be happy to do my best to answer them with whatever knowledge I have. All right, so there is our second piece trimmed. And now quite literally, we are just gonna repeat that process. So you guys get to watch me repeat the placement tack downs. We're gonna run our next piece. And if I take a look at my photo, this is the cream fabric. And again, all the fabrics I'm using come from that fat quarter set. <laughs> my bobbin's a little loopy. So to fix that, I'm gonna go ahead and reset my bobbin in the machine too. So it's having a little bit of thread looping here, but I can still see the placement stitch, so I know where the fabric's going. But sometimes that just means you need to reset it in there. There we go. And this is proof, you guys, that even Anita has issues. <laughs> it's not perfect for everyone. All right, so again, just like we did earlier, what was the rule I said? If you guys remember, it is to cover the last laid fabric with what we are going to fold over. So I am wanting to use this piece that has a nice little interfacing on it. So let's see. If I lay it right here. Yeah, that should do the trick. If you're ever worried, you guys, you can also lay it and then fold it and faux fold, and that can let you know if it will cover the placement stitch. So the only goal I have is to make sure I have enough fabric to cover the area that I'm about to fold to. So I think this looks pretty good. My fabrics are overlapped on the edge, and I'm gonna go ahead and run that folding stitch. So right now we are making folded fabric piece number two. It's so easy. You see it just does a little line and it does all the folding for you. So you don't have to sit there and measure and try to figure out what sizes these should be because the design just does it in the digitizing for you. So I fold that material over again just leave my excess if I don't want to pre-cut. Karen says this is a lot like foundation piecing. Yes, it is, Karen. Foundation piecing is kind of the premise of where this comes from. The foundation being our cornerstone, and then we're building off of that. So that's a great observation to make. But if you're new to this kind of stuff, you might not even know what foundation piecing is. So we try to make it user-friendly, very beginner-friendly, and don't want to do too many complicated terms. So quite literally, our cornerstone is the corner building block of our folds. And it does not have to be in the corner. So I'm sure we get asked that too. Does the cornerstone always sit in the corner? No, it could totally start in the middle of your design. But for us, it was conveniently the corner. So there is our next fold. I'm going to take my scissors and again, trim away that excess fabric. So now you're starting to see the shape of that bookmark create itself. It's starting to get more vertical. There we go. I'm one for fun sound effects, so I hope that doesn't bother you people. Hope you all love it. All right. So now that we have that ready to go, we are gonna run our top section, which is the placement stitch for the top portion of the fabric. And we have the last but not least, lovely purple or violet. And the colors just go so well together. This was a fun one to prep. If I show you the materials picture here, we got all four of our fabrics there. They just work so well together. That is the beauty of picking um, fat quarter bundles or jelly rolls or anything like that. Um, charm packs that are five by five. So as long as the fabric's the size of your project, which is why I'm biased to saying fat quarters because we need a couple, couple inches for some of our projects. But we are going to do, let's see. Oh, of course, there wasn't enough interfacing on this one, but I'm lucky. The flower design going on it is super lightweight. I'll show you that real quick. And it's also dark purple, so I don't need to worry about anything being seen through it. So I'm just gonna peel that so it's not half on, half off. And we'll just lay it without any interfacing. So again, you don't have to use the interfacing. It's helpful to prevent pulling, but this design doesn't have a ton of embroidery on it, so it should be fine. So again, this is my wrong side technically facing up. Align the fabric to the overlapped lines of my placement stitch there. And we go ahead and run that folding stitch. Now, I'm almost ready to get going with all the fun embroidery. And then I'll go over some of the other definitions or techniques um, of these folded fabrics in other projects that I wanted to show you guys. And we'll get to that coupon code in a minute. just want to get the stitching going since I know that'll take a second. 
All right, so then once again, I'm not even gonna pull it out, I'll just show you guys. Take our loose fabric, slip it under the machine foot, and straighten it out. Again, if your fabric is smaller than your hoop, you can tape it down to the stabilizer to help hold your fold. You can also use tacky spray adhesive, like temporary adhesive, um, but I'm very big about just pressing, finger creasing, and holding it in place. But we have some people that might not want their hands near their needle, totally understandable. In that case, I would just say secure it another way. And it's coming together. I love those pretty colors. All right, so I'm gonna trim this last piece and then I'm gonna talk you guys through the next part of the design. So we take our scissors. Again, our last fold has been tacked, so now I'm trimming away the excess from around it. There we go. And there we have it. Where are we at? Over here? I wanted to make sure you guys can see it. <laughs> so there we are with the basic premise of the shape of the bookmark, and we created it with our teal cornerstone fabric, or the first standard applique piece. Um, the first piece in any fold design will always be placed right side facing up if it has other folds building off of it. Um, we'll go into that a little bit when I show you some other samples here. But then the other three fabrics you see follow our three-step folded fabric process. Super easy. I like to joke that it feels almost meditative. You do one, and then you just start over. Again, the placement, the fold, the tack. And you could just do this as a little system in the morning, and then you run the embroidery. So definitely a great way to make a fun and quick project while trying a different technique out. So the next color in my design is going to be the flowers. Always trim your thread from the top, ladies and gentlemen. That's my pro tip for you. That way the thread doesn't get stuck up in your tension system. And I try to practice what I preach, so that's why I point it out. That way I remind myself to do it. And then we pull our thread tail from the bottom. And since I'm doing these as little daisies, I'm gonna go with a white thread. And they don't have to be daisies. You can make them any color you guys like. But I thought this would be a fun, almost spring-friendly collection. This also makes a great last-minute gift. Let's say you're one to send Valentine's Day presents or make some for grandkids. This is a fun and easy project. Great to encourage reading. Book club. Book club, yes. That too, we have another. It is called Book Club, right? The other collection? Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, I think there's another one called Book Club that features bookmarks with sayings from famous books. So different techniques in those. This one has the fun folded fabric in it, but definitely be sure to look up other bookmarks if you like fun and fast. So we got our daisies going. Let's see. The next color. I'm going to go ahead and reference my tutorial real quick. There is my steps. And after my flowers will be the flower centers. So I'm going to grab my yellow and keep that on deck. And again, while you're watching this stitch out, I wanted to show how pretty these are so you can kind of see some of the other fold patterns. You'll notice the folds are not in the same spot, so they are different. And then we have different little botanicals. Some of them have bugs or bees. This one's a butterfly. Different types of florals there, so very cute. Yes, Betty, we love folded fabric too, which I'll show you guys in a second. We have all kinds of folded fabric. Um, if you go on our website and shop the technique, so if you hit shop all and you apply a filter and you look up techniques, you can actually filter the products by what technique is included. And there is one that says folded fabric and there are hundreds of collections that pop up. Not like one or two, but a lot. And um, folded fabric appears in a lot of different things that we do in different ways. So. I didn't cover in in-depth yet because some of these are other techniques we'll go over, but folded fabric is done in paper piecing, which is like an applique design that has folds in it. Um, we also use folded fabric in our borders for quilt blocks. Uh, that amazing Bargellissimo quilt that you saw that was entirely folds with no embroidery in it. So lots of different ways you can have folded fabric in your projects. And let's say you don't wanna to commit to something that was like massive with all those folds. This is a great way to try this technique out and have a finished project when you're done. Who says you have to make it for anyone? You can make it for yourself. <laughs> I'm probably gonna keep this bookmark because they're just so cute and we already have a sample of them all. So keep what I stitch. 
Maybe that's the real reason I'm on live every week, you guys, is I get to keep my projects. <laughs> we all have pride in our stitch outs. So since you guys have been diligently with me, I'm going to go ahead and let you know our promo code for today. So very awesome. If you tuned in today to watch me stitch out this bookmark, even if you're not stitching with me, if you hopped on here, um, you get to know about our code. We're doing $10 off your entire order um, with the code FFLIVE10. And if you're curious why that's the code, it's folded fabric. So FF Live 10 is the code. Um, it should be up on screen for you. That is valid through tonight at midnight. So if you tuned in today, you can use that and get $10 off whatever you purchase. I believe you have to spend one cent. So if you don't hit the $10 mark, you'll get your item for free because it's just going to take off uh, $10 out of the total. Um, I also, let's go ahead and switch our threads before I move on. But yeah, I wanted to make sure you guys could shop. A little bit of a discount for tuning in. So then if you find anything that I'm talking about that's really cool, you can save some money on it. $10 off is a pretty good deal. We like rewarding our live tune-in people. So if you're one of those people that come back every week, then I hope you're reaping the benefits. We get all these promo codes for you guys. All right, so I'm switching my thread over to a gold metallic thread. And I'm going to use that for the pretty vines and leaves that are in my bookmark. And if anyone's curious, I'm still using a standard bobbin right now, but I did grab, where did I set it? Did I lose my clear bobbin casing? Sure enough. <laughs> oh, there it is. We found it. <laughs> I have a clear bobbin casing here. I will be winding a matching bobbin. That way, when you see the bookmarks on both sides, they look nice and clean and have a finished back and front. And I saved that to show you guys me winding it because that's just one more part of the project you get to be involved in. So again, the live promo code we are doing today is $10 off your entire order uh, with the code Folded Fabric or FFLIVE10. Uh, so FFLIVE10 at checkout and you'll get $10 off your order. That is through tonight at midnight. And then I will tell the people that tune into the live, you get a sneak peek of what the sale is starting tomorrow. We're doing 35% off Folded Fabric collections. So that does start tomorrow, but today you guys get your $5 off. So if you're interested in the folded fabric technique that we're going over or any of the projects I want to show you guys, which I can do now that we're stitching, I'm going to show off some of these. Oh, I brought a little book to show you the little bookmark in action. Isn't that cute? Hold your spot. I love that I picked a page with books on it. That was not intentional. So I opened it up and there's just a bunch of books on the picture. Um, but very cute. They are flat and um, for those wondering or if you missed the beginning, they do not have batting in them. So they're just as thick as the satin stitch and fabric themselves. So they lay pretty flat in your design or in your book without causing any binding stress. So very nice. We also recently did vinyl see-through. See-through bookmarks was the name of them. Those were really cool too. Uh, they do not feature the folded fabric, but they are the same concept, bookmarks that are fun and easy to stitch. Now, I was talking about folded fabric in other instances and how we can use it. And I have a few collections here to show off. So this first one is our Quilting 123 system, which is a huge collection. Um, it has so many files in it, like over, I want to say over 200. I don't have the roster with me all, but it's like a premium plus project, which means it has tons of files to build your own quilting collections. This is a sampler, like little strip of blocks from Quilting 123, and it will feature those folded fabric borders, and it has some merging in it. So all these are topics we'll be going over in the coming weeks, um, specifically merging. I'll be showing that in a live soon. Um, so if you're new to that, we'll go over it together. All right, so where's my scissors so I can properly trim my thread and pull it from the bottom. And now we are at the back fabric tack down. So this is important because we are finishing off our bookmarks. I'm gonna set my little sample aside for now. Make sure I have working space. This is the small table area, everyone. All right, so there is, I'll show you guys the bookmark right here so you can kind of see it. The next step on my screen is a two-ply tacking stitch around the whole shape. Now what that is going to do is secure a fabric to finish off the back. And that is what our back looks like. So if you've not done anything on the back side of your hoop before, it's super easy and very cool because we have our top thread and we have our bobbin thread and that is what helps secure things to the bottom side. So what I'm gonna do is take the fabric that I want as the back of my bookmark, which for me is gonna be this fun floral fabric. I'm gonna try to clean up the top edge so we don't have a bunch laying around. Let's see how wide that is. Oh yeah, I can just cut straight down from here. 
Now I don't have my rotary cutter and cutting mat, so you guys can laugh at my chopping job, but I just need to get some fabric to show you the technique. It doesn't have to look super pretty. Trust me, I'm one to love clean, crisp, sharp edges. So if I was at my own workstation, I would be ironing and straightening things. But um, yes, we have a question. Janice would like to know if she can use vinyl instead of fabric in this collection. In this one, you know, Janice, that's genius. She wants to know if she could use vinyl instead of fabric. It depends. If you're meaning see-through vinyl, no, because it's folded fabric, so you would definitely see those folds overlapping other places. If you're using fun colored vinyl, like um, faux leather vinyl, that's an opportunity to try it. Um, but just keep in mind thickness, because we are using just cotton. We eliminated the batting so that it's not extra bulky, and vinyls tend to make things a little thicker. So it'd be a fun concept to try, um, but I'd avoid the see-through, because then you'd have to match all your bobbins and do a million other things. Our see-through bookmarks talk you through that step, um, making a match for every color. But these are made to be nice and easy, so I would stick with just cotton fabrics or linen if you want to get fancy with the material. Um, but maybe not vinyl, just for how thick it could be. But I am not the master of sewing here, so try it and let us know if it works, and we can always try with vinyl. Um, I will have to request a helper to get me some tape. Yes. Catherine's going to run and grab us some tape because that's the one thing I forgot. So while we hang tight, what I'm going to be doing is placing my back fabric on the hoop. So while she grabs some tape, I can go back to that quilting one, two, three to tell you guys. What I was mentioning earlier is how this collection can build quilt blocks from scratch. We'll be going over merging in some coming weeks in another live. Um, so keep your eyes peeled for that. But this is an example of that folded fabric done as a frame around design. So in this collection, you can build your own block and merge the different parts, which would be your background the stippling, and then our frame, and then our center design choice. Thank you, Catherine. We got our handy dandy tape. Um, so that's a great example of quilt blocks in the hoop, as well as folded fabric and merging all the things. All right, so now that we have some tape, for those always asking, we have Embroidery Perfection Tape by r &K. And all the years I've worked here, I am so biased to loving this tape because it stays sticky forever. It can stick to your machine, you guys, and it will not leave a gross residue. So if I just stuck it all over, peeled it off, it won't leave any residue. So very helpful. And it stays sticky for project after project. Like you can reuse this tape for a long time. Now I taped left and right side of this to help it lay flat, but because my hoop slides in and out, I wanna tape the top and the bottom too so that it won't get stuck under the hoop. That's a big pro tip for you. And again, my folds and cuts and stuff are not very straight, but that's because I'm working on a table without a cutting board. So just excuse any silly looking cuts. There we go. Make sure my edge is flat. All right, so we have our back fabric taped down on the back of the hoop. Again, for context, this is the back. And there is our front. So now that we have our fabric pretty side facing the back or outside towards you, we're gonna lay that back down and my biggest suggestion if you are a home machine user and you don't have a multi-needle is to slide your hoop in and guide it to make sure your fabric and that tape isn't going to unstick itself and bunch up on the bottom. I sometimes give it a little peek. I'll bend down and like look and slowly slide it in. And you can kind of see it through the tear away sometimes if it's still in place. But that looks good to me. And now we're going to go ahead and run our tack down stitch. Now I still haven't wound my matching bobbin because I don't need it yet. So don't make things more complicated than they have to be. We're just gonna stick with the white until we get to that part. So I have my purple, thread my needle, and we're gonna go ahead and run the two ply tacking stitch. And if anyone ends up making these really fun bookmarks, send us some pictures so we can share it on our customer feature Fridays. We love to show off you guys' hard work and your fun color choices. <laughs> Everyone has their own eye for design. So again, we put our fabric on the back of the hoop if you're just now watching, and this is to help finish off and cover up those bobbin stitches. And now I'm going to have to remove my hoop so we can go ahead and wind a bobbin and put it into the machine. So I'll show you guys that back real quick. 
There it is. The bobbin is what's holding it in place, so I know it's harder to see right here. So what I'm going to do before we go ahead and wind that bobbin is to remove my tape, and we're going to trim the back of the hoop so that that excess fabric is gone. Again, you can stick it to your machine. It's fine if you want to reuse your tape. And then I take my curved scissors and just trim away the excess fabric. I hope you guys like this project. It's a great springtime transitional project to work on with all the pretty flowers on it. All right, so now that we have that front and back, I'm gonna go ahead and set it down and we are gonna work on winding our bobbin. So I'm gonna take out my white one that I had in there. We got some heat for this last live, but yes, I'm using an empty bobbin casing from those disposables and we're rewinding on it. And we have done that for years and never had issues. If it causes you problems, you don't have to do it that way. <laughs> but this is truthfully the way Anita's been doing it. So I go ahead and wrap my bobbin thread. Give it a couple twists around there. Cindy says, this is cute and fun. Isn't it? All right, are we gonna go? Start, there we go. <laughs> I hit okay instead of start. So now we're just being patient, letting it do its thing, winding us a little bobbin. It doesn't need to be a full bobbin, so if you're at home and you're like, I need to fill that bobbin with tons of thread, I would say about half is probably fine. We're just doing a satin stitch on the edge of a bookmark, and the bookmark's fairly small, five by seven-ish, so I'm just going to do about a halfway full bobbin, and we'll do fingers crossed and hope that finishes the project. But I hate wasting excess thread unless you have to, so I'm going to say that looks pretty good. And we have another question. What's up? What is the design name of the quilt you had on the table with the preview video? Yes, the preview video. Was that the Bargelissimo? It might have been this one. Is that the quote we have in question? This is Bargelissimo. It's a huge collection that features these strips of folded fabric. Um, if you like the folded fabric concept, same thing I'm doing here. Placement, fold, and tack over and over again. The difference is that one makes skinny strips of fabric and then all those skinny strips get sewn together to make that really cool mesmerizing pattern to it. So very doable, but that one will take some time. Um, but definitely a cool project if you want something, like I said, I think folded fabric is very meditative. Um, and so that'll help you kind of keep the folds going, but you don't have to finish the project by deadline. That's always nice. All right, so I'll take my thread from where I was winding the bobbin and we'll go ahead and re-thread. Now I put the purple bobbin I just wound in the casing and I have my top thread to match and we're gonna hit go. And it says about 12 minutes on that. So while this is embroidering, we'll go over some of the other projects I grabbed here to show you guys. But there is our folded fabric bookmark and we are running our satin stitch. So again, before I step away from that, make sure you have your color matched bobbin in there. That way it looks pretty on both sides. So super fun. Again, if you've hopped in part of the way through, these are the projects, this is the project that I'm stitching right now, are these folded fabric bookmarks. We are doing a sale starting tomorrow on folded fabric, but if you tuned in today, you get $10 off your purchase today. That is good until midnight tonight, Eastern time. I have to say that now so everyone knows we're on the East Coast. Um, and then tomorrow is when we'll be kicking off our sale on folded fabric collections. So basically anything that has the folded fabric technique um, tagged on the product. We'll be doing a discounted sale on those for 35% off. So keep your eyes peeled for that to go up live on the website. But today you get to stop like a discount code with it. Um, and I was mentioning earlier, so we did have someone ask again about this one, Bargelissimo. Do I have a year on here? Let's see if I can give you a year it came out. 2015. 2015, so this is a good one. An oldie but a goodie, we like to say. But you can kind of see those wave patterns happening in here. And I'm going to show you with the phone up close so you can kind of see what this is constructed with. But there is that beautiful folded fabric. And you can see they are done in strips. So if I was to start at like the top left, we have this one long strip. Let's say it's about 8 or 12 inches. And it would stop there. And then you just sew the next strip. And they get kind of staggered to each other to create this pattern. Now this one's in some fun brights, but we've done it in... Um, heirloom colors, um, colors to match living rooms, so you really can do this in any colorway or style. I've even seen it done in ombre, like ombre fabric, or batiks, that would be really cool. 
So lots of ways you can style this with your own, and you can also downsize it, make it a small table runner or placemat instead of this big one. But very cool to show off that. Now I showed the quilting one, two, three with the flowers and the butterflies earlier. This is from the same collection, quilting one, two, three, but this is a Christmas quilt that they made using the same exact collection. So I mentioned quilting one, two, three is like a premium, premium plus size collection, which in Anita terms, that means it comes with a ton of digitized files in it for you to make all kinds of things. And this is showing that folded fabric action in the borders. So in quilting one, two, three, I mentioned it briefly, it teaches you how to build your own quilt blocks. So if you're completely new to quilting in the hoop, you get to kind of customize what your blocks look like. So you get to pick the stippling in the background, the type of frame. We have different styles of framing with folds. This is the most common one you'll see at Anita is the four folds. Um, and sometimes we like to swap around fabrics to make it more visually interesting. And it really adds that almost sashed look to your quilt kind of gives it some borders to everything and helps you focus on the pretty embroidery. So that's a great example of the folded fabric as borders. Another one, I want to show it in some projects because we are doing a bookmark. Plant cozies. And yes, it's a fake plant, but isn't that fun? Um, I have the little pot sit, sitting in here, but I want to take that out and show it off. This is an Anita's Express project. Um, which in theory finishes in 45 to 90 minutes, obviously however long your embroidery takes to run, um, but super simple with step-by-step -step instructions like all our other tutorials. And in it, it will show you how to add this vinyl lining to the plant cozy. But if I show you up close with the phone, oh, let me guess, I turned it off, didn't I? What's the password? There we go. <laughs> Is that live now? Does it need a reconnect? I turned off the phone, you guys. <laughs> well, technical difficulties. I want to show you guys the pretty folds in this block, but um, the plant cozies, Anita's Express, I want to make sure I called them the right thing. They have different designs in them. They're super cute. Thank you, Haley. We got the camera back up so I can show you these folds up close. But there you can see how it's folded fabric. We have blue, a tan like muslin fabric, some light blue, the white, and this project is created with that folded fabric technique. And so this is kind of showing it in an application in a different way. So instead of just traditional folds like this, we have fun projects with folds in it. I love how Southwestern this is. Very fun and Aztec looking. And then you just drop the plant in. And the vinyl helps if any water leaks, but obviously it doesn't act as an actual pot. It's just to cover the pot. But that's a good one to show off for you guys too for those folds. Another project I grabbed, we don't talk about this enough and I think it's cool, it's, it's a time project, you gotta invest a little bit of time. This is our special edition perpetual calendar, <laughs> which is a really cool concept if you have a sewing room or an office and let's say you are retired, you spend a lot of time in there, how fun would it be to have a fabric calendar where you can change out the dates with Velcro, move the dates around and honor little special dates. We have like birthdays, Valentine's Day. And the reason I grabbed this one, it has folded fabric in it. So if you notice the border all the way around the calendar, it has little two by two squares. And then we have these really cool sashing blocks down at the bottom that feature folded fabric. And this shows it in more of like a, what I call it, a rainbow array where they all go diagonal and then the other one meets in the middle. So it makes this really cool point. And this is a sewn sample, so unfortunately we sewed them on so people wouldn't steal the items off of them at events. But uh, they are made to be done on felt with Velcro so that you can take the days of the week off, shuffle it around for each month, and you can even change the colors up or make it more seasonal. So here we have an example of May. Here is our October month. And you can put the pumpkin wherever for Halloween. There's an example of the little tile with the Velcro on it got a 4th of July thing. So we have different icons in here that obviously are done with standard embroidery. But I pulled this one just to feature folded fabric in a different method because a lot of times we just see it in quilt blocks. So I thought this was kind of cool. They're technically quilt blocks, but it's done in a project style. So that is the Perpetual Calendar Special Edition. Now this one is a quilting technique known as radio quilting. And we will touch on radio quilting later on in the coming weeks, so don't you worry if you've never heard of it. But it's essentially folded fabric in a radial shape. So same thing with a placement stitch, folding stitch, and tacking stitch. But in this case, it centers around an applique or a motif in the middle, and the folds follow in like a circle shape. Now this one's cool because obviously it makes a hexagon looking quilt. Um, this one is our Crazy Quilt Hexagons. 
and that was for May of 2022. So about two years or so old, but very cute. Obviously we did a fun fat quarter bundle here so that the fabrics and the designs tie together. Um, but this features those folds. And the cool thing is you can't tell which block we started with, which block we ended with. Or if I'm just looking at, let's say the sunflower, you can't tell which fabric we started on. So that is the secret between our folded fabric method. I'll show you this up close. You cannot see which one was the first fold that we laid because they all have this fun, crazy stitching on them. The, obviously the quilt gets bound and finished on the edges and then the applique in the center conceals any raw edges of your folded fabric. So really cool that you can make these really complicated looking quilts with just the most simple techniques, you guys. Literally, it's a one, two, three. Placement, fold, and tack. And this one's perfect for spring, so that's another reason I grabbed it. I love it just as it is. A little centerpiece. You could put some flowers in the middle, put it on a dining room table, or a little end table. And this is, I believe, our a size block. So our collections do come in multiple sizes, so you could kind of scale it a little smaller if you want a smaller table runner or placemat but very pretty with those folds. And of course it has that crazy stitching on it, which is another one of our techniques. Our bookmark is coming along. And I'm seeing some thread issues. So I'm gonna cut and fix that real quick because nobody's perfect. And it looks like my design has given me some problems here. Of course. It looks like, if you guys wanna know what happened, it unthreaded the needle and was still stitching somehow. I don't know if our sensor needs to be clean. And it was doing some looping here. So I'm just gonna pull everything out. This happens to us too. What we do is reset our bobbin. And you know what, you guys? I probably didn't wind enough bobbin. That was probably it. We got enough that I think we can make it last. If it runs out, it'll run out and I'll just wind some more. We all just do this as we go, figure it out because that's what doing it live is, right? <laughs> we fix our problems. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim the little loop there. This was where the needle started, so that's why it's not finished yet on that side. And it looks like it ran pretty good all the way up to like right there. I'm gonna check the back, still looks good. So I think I caught it right when it was having problems, which is the goal. We always wanna try to catch it at the beginning of an issue and not at the end. So I'm just gonna slide my hoop back in. Now, if you're new to home embroidery and you're not familiar with navigating your machine yet, the screen commands might be different. But because I stopped and cut the thread, I wanna make sure I don't miss any stitches or nothing um, gaps weird. So I'm gonna navigate to my stitching moving forward back step. I don't know what you call this button. <laughs> Everyone calls it something different. Stitch advanced or back steps, but it basically pulls up the navigation to move forward or back in the design by steps or by stitch count. So I'm just gonna go back about 20 stitches. So I hit the minus 10 two times, and then I exit out of that screen by hitting okay, because I don't wanna accidentally bump it and move myself again. And we're just gonna go ahead and pick back up where we were. And I'm gonna keep an eye on it for a second just to see if the stitching continues nice and smooth. And it's looking good. All right, so we'll let that keep going. We're almost done with that one, and then I'll show you guys the finished project. Um, but I want to go back to, I got like two more samples here of quilts that feature folded fabric. This is a fun one. Our monster truck quilts. Now this one came out this year, I want to say a couple months ago, like two months ago or so. Um, a very fun quilting collection. It's gender neutral in my opinion, because I think this trucks, these trucks are cool. They're really cool. I think boy or girl would like this. It's fun. It makes, I like the pink truck. Like this one's just standing out to me. Um, but we do have cool embroidery in here, but the thing I wanted to focus on is, again, that folded fabric. Now, this one's arranged a little differently. So some of the blocks, like this nice big pink truck, is just a basic embroidery on standard fabric. But then we look at some of our others, and we do have this folded fabric. So this block featured three fabrics, one, two, three, and we had that fold, and then the embroidery and applique ran over it. Um, here's another example of the folds making almost a frame, but you'll notice it's big on one side and then little, and it's made kind of, what is it, not even? I wanted to say organic, but organic is not the right word. It's just fun shapes. Ablong, ablong. What would you say, Catherine? Catawongus. Catawongus, that's a good one. Yeah, so very haphazardly. They're made to look like uh, they're pieced together. 
in disarray. It's very fun. Chaotic quilts is what I like to say. You'll see the sizing again there. They change. It just makes this one really dynamic, and I think that's really cool because a lot of times when we have folds, they're all very uniform. They're very straight or all go in a pattern to make those traditional shapes. But this is a fun one where you just get to play with your fabrics. Like we did this really cool, just stripes and spots was the fabric set. And then we threw in some solids in there and some white. And really that is what made the quilt in my opinion is all these fun, vivid fabrics. So I just wanted to show off that one as well. And then, let's see, last but not least, I have a really pretty one that's a little more baby friendly here. This is our On Point um, Fauna, Fauna, yes. And this came out in 2020. We've done this in different color iterations. So we've done it in pink on cream, brown on cream, like you see here. And I think we've done a soft yellow as well. So I've seen it in lots of different color versions. The only one I could find today was like this tan brown one, but I want to say the baby pink was so cute. So definitely keep an eye on that one on the website. But I want to show you this up close because this is totally different. I did it again, Haley. I keep shutting off the phone, you guys. It has a power button like a normal iPhone and I go boop. Unless I'm making it up and I'm not hitting the button and it's just shutting off. It could be either or. But I want to make sure I show you guys these folds. This is done, thank you so much. These are done like traditional blocks in the hoop. And they are turned like on point. So if I was to carve out the block, it is this shape right here. Is it upside down? We're waiting. Technical difficulties. We're almost done with our bookmark too, so that works out. It's always on the last collection, you guys. I want to show you the last one, and then the phone goes, nope, you're not going to show it. <laughs> Can I get it back up? Yeah. All right, we're not going to hit any buttons. All right, there we go. I wanted to show you this really cute quilt. So sweet. Like I said, definitely more of a baby or soft nursery kind of thing, but on point fauna. And as I was trying to point out before I shut off the phone, there is the block right there. It is a diamond shape on point, but it is a true square. So when you're stitching it in the hoop, you can stitch it squared like this and the design is just turned. And then when you go to piece the quilt, this collection included um, square, squared off blocks basically. So the corner triangle helps make a right edge. We have a block here. And the reason I wanted to show this is the really cool like pinwheel shape that these folds are making. And that is built into the design. So you didn't have to sit there and think, how do I make perfect white space around each center motif and get all the distance even? And how do I get this fabric to be the same size as these? And all that's done in the digitizing for you. So all you have to do is your placement stitch, folding stitch, tacking stitch. So I want to keep repeating that because I don't think people realize how easy quilting in the hoop is. But look how cute that is. And it came out so pretty with this fun fabric. Again, you can do different materials to change up the pinwheel look there. But that was the last sample I just want to show, kind of give you guys a taste of those folds. All right, so now we'll head back to our finished bookmark, which was what we were stitching all day. Again, there is my picture for comparison. And we'll go ahead and pull that out of the machine. And she's done. It looks so beautiful. I'm going to sing for you guys because I'm excited. Very pretty bookmark. So once it's finished stitching, obviously I mentioned we did two layers of tearaway. So the best part about tearaway is could just tear it right out. <laughs> I love doing that, you guys, it's so fun. Um, so things with satin stitches pop out just like that, which is why we recommend doubling it up. If you had a single layer and you accidentally touched the design or poked it, it could fall through that single layer. Um, that also changes with the thickness. So let's say you have heavy duty tear away, you could probably get away with one sheet because it'll probably hold up a little stronger. Um, so it's just about trying what works best for your machine. Um, for those curious about needle sizes and all that jazz, we are using a 7511 on this project, so just a standard embroidery needle, um, and it worked just fine. If you have any fuzzies on the edge of the design, I don't have my markers here, but this is what it looked like when I tore it out. This is normal for anyone to be like, oh my gosh, the edges are ragged. They're not. That's just what happens with tearaway. There are multiple ways you can mitigate that. Some of the ways I like to suggest is if you are safe with fire, if you're not crazy, if you take a small tea light candle or a candle lighter stick where it extends the flame away from you, you can gently singe the edges of any satin stitch in a project and it will get rid of that sta uh, stabilizer bits in the edge for you. 
And if you're like, Melissa, fire is too scary. I don't want to have my sewing room go up in flames. Then the other thing you can do is take your curved tip embroidery scissors and just carefully glide along the edge, snipping some of those fuzzies away. Once you've done that, the Anita hack is to find a marker that matches and you can color the edge in to kind of conceal that in the edge. Um, another final pro tip for you is let's say you're doing this with black or you're doing black satin stitches on any other project, they make black tearaway. So you can also get tearaway that will help conceal that on darker colors. So let's say since I did purple, I could have hooped black tearaway and it probably would have concealed it just a little bit better, at least would have been dark in the edge. But we had white on hand and I wanted to be sure I went over those finishing technique tips for you guys. But that would be how we make a folded fabric bookmark. So again, we'll reiterate our three folded fabric steps for this week's technique is the placement stitch for your first fold, the tacking stitch, or sorry, placement stitch, folding stitch, and then our tacking stitch to secure it in place. And all of our folds are built off of a standard applique, which we like to call our cornerstone fabric. And trivia, it does not need to be in the corner. So there is a little summary for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this project. I did want to mention one more thing. We sent out an email yesterday letting you guys know that we had some Valentine's Day cards marked down at $5 off. Um, and we decided to push that promo till Friday. So if you happen to go to our homepage and just scroll down, you'll see the feature on these cards there. Um, it's three different Valentine's cards that we marked down by $5 off. Yesterday was send a card a friend, uh, send a friend a card day. Whew, that's a mouthful. And because of that, we wanted to mark down some cute Valentine's Day cards, but why stop at one day? So be sure to snag those at $5 off. And remember, you have $10 off. Coupon code is FF. Live 10 if you tuned in today with our stitch out. So I hope this gave you guys some more information on our folded fabric technique. Be sure to tune in every week when we do our lives and I hope you guys have fun stitching. Happy Thursday.